Hello and welcome to our discussion on the cash flows. The focus of this session is free cash flow. In this session we will try to understand the calculation of free cash flows when the financial statements are given. The free cash flows of a firm as a non-gap number so therefore one cannot see the free cash flows directly show on the annual report. However, the cash flow from operation, cash flow from investment and cash flow from financing decisions are part of the annual report. So when you see the financial statements, income statement, cash flow statement and the balance sheet, we cannot see the free cash flows for the firm in that. However, it is possible to determine the free cash flows for the firm given the financial statements. So free cash flows for the firm is a non-gap number and it can be determined by using either profit after tax, can also be determined by using profit before interest and tax or can be calculated by using the cash from operation. Similarly, CF, FCF can also be calculated directly from the revenue or income too. But in this exercise, we will use PAT, PBIT and CFO to determine the free cash flows for the firm. The focus of this session is the free cash flows for the firm not free cash flows for the equity. Free cash flows for the firm is the cash available for the debt holders and equity holders. In the next session we will see the free cash flows for the equity holders. So given this information there is a balance sheet, income statement. First we will determine the cash flow statement or prepare the cash flow statement find the CFO, CFI and CFF and then calculate the free cash flows. When the income statement and the cash flow statement it is possible to find the cash flow statement by understanding the interrelationship between the income statement and the cash flow and uh, the balance sheet. We'll start with the CFO and we'll use the indirect method of determining the CFO. So the CFO is PAT plus minus adjustments. The adjustments are for depreciation is a non-cash item, add interest a non-operating item add amortization of R&D, another non-cash item. Then we'll make adjustment for the operating working capital changes. So creditor, the creditors have decreased, so that means the creditors have been paid during this period. So the decrease in creditors minus 8,000. Outstanding expenses have also decreased, so therefore we make the payment on outstanding expenses. There is a cash outflow. Debtors, debtors have increased, that means there is a cash, there is a credit sales, so therefore it will be deducted minus increase in the debtors. Stock the stock has increased so purchase or cash outflow due to the stock. You can see that we have not considered the outstanding interest because we treat interest as a non-operating or a financing item. So the CFO is a summation of all these adjustments and CFO is therefore called the adjusted PAT. It's adjusted PAT, adjusted for non-cash, non-operating and the credit items.
<coughs> then we'll see the cash from financing decision the capital has increased so increase in the capital is considered as an issue of capital but we can also see that there is a premium so that means the shares have been issued during this period at a premium the loan have also increased so issue of loans or borrowed money but it's important to observe that interest is calculated on the opening balance only so that means the loan has been availed or taken at the end of the year interest has not been paid here entire interest is outstanding so there is no cash flow on the interest the dividend we can see the in case the company has paid dividend that will be visible through the change in the reserves so the reserves is opening reserve plus pat minus the closing reserve will give us the cash flow because of the dividends so the dividends paid during the period is 25000 which is a cash from financing decision or a cash outflow of the financing decision the dividend has been arrived as the changes in the reserves and pat the summation of all these items will give us the cash from financing decision which is positive 100000 now we'll see cash from investment decision the cash from investment decision deals with the purchase and sale of assets and purchase and sale of r&d purchase and sale of investments if any so the plant was 20000 plant has gone up to 60000 and there was a depreciation of 10000 so there is a purchase of plant during this period as 59000 so there is an outflow of cash to that extent we are treating that the change in a plant as a purchase for cash because there is no corresponding liability for that the research and development also an asset but the change in the research and development is equal to the amortization so therefore there is no purchase or sale of sale of r&d during this period so the cfi is uh, the cfi is the summation of these items and which is equal to which is equal to 59 59000 negative so there is a positive cfi of 85000 there is a positive cff 100000 and a negative negative cfi 59000 69000 so once we complete the cash flow statement which shows the cfo cfi and cff now we will see the free cash flows for the firm as mentioned here free cash flows for the firm can be determined from the pat or pbit or cfo so from the pat if we take the pat as a base is 150000 is the pat since the free cash flows for the firm is before interest so we add back interest interest is added back but interest is when we add back the tax shield on interest also goes so therefore what the amount that we add is i into 1 minus t depreciation is a non cash item amortization is a non cash item and we have to find the working capital changes and the capex which are not visible directly in the cash flow statement so working capital here is the operating working capital so operating 
current assets minus the operating current liabilities. So the operating current assets are the stock and the debtors and operating current liabilities are the creditors and outstanding expenses. We are not taking outstanding interest or the cash. So CA minus CL is the current assets minus current liability is the working capital and the working capital was 17,000 and 105,000 so working capital has increased so then so while computing the free cash flows we deduct 88,000 then capex capex we already determined here but capex is the change in the net assets plus depreciation. So the summation of all these items will give us free cash flows for the firm. So free cash flows for the firm 25,600 is now available for the payments towards interest, payment towards the principal repayment of the debt or any money due to be paid to the equity holders. We can also find free cash flows for the firm as mentioned early by using PBIT. So PBIT of the firm is a sales minus COGS minus expenses minus depreciation and minus R&D. So PBIT is 218,000 and we charge tax on that 0 0.30 is a tax so 65,400 so post tax PBIT is 152,600 add back the non-cash items depreciation add back R&D amortization deduct the working capital changes and deduct the capital expenditure will give us free cash flows for the firm. So free cash flows for the firm can be determined by PBIT2. In the same way we can also find the free cash flows for the firm by using CFO. So 85,500 minus the tax shield. The tax shield is 3,000 minus 2100 or directly 30 percent of the interest because while computing CFO we don't take the tax we just add back the uh, interest without making adjustment for the tax benefits so that is adjusted here and already the working capital changes has already been done so the only other item which required is the capex so the CFO less the tax shield less capex will give the free cash flows for the firm. So free cash flows for the firm is a money available for the debt holders and equity holder and the free cash flows for the firm can be used to determine the value of the firm and the free cash flows can also be used for some, of, some capital budgeting exercise. And the free cash flows, this money will be used for the distribution of interest or the repayment of the principal or distribution of dividend or, or the buyback of shares. So to summarize, CFI is uh, minus 59,000, CFF is plus 100,000 positive. CFO is positive 85,500 cash in hand so we will see the different cash flows and the free cash flows is 25,000 so when we want to understand the cash flows it is necessary to see there are different varieties of different shades of cash flows so depending on the purpose and the use one can use any of these cash flows. Thank you very much.